the one which the emperor has in the Roman world. The Roman Emperor Constantine had set in motion the globalization of Christianity when he adopted it as his religion and gave the church riches, stunning architecture and authority. In the Western Empire, Constantine's legacy is the Roman Catholic Church. And this is the headquarters of its global media reach. From here, 200 journalists drawn from 51 countries broadcast in 40 languages to five continents. So you could only feel left out if you live in Antarctica. From this studio, they're transmitting the voice of the Vatican to South America. The survival of the church in Rome might be regarded as a sort of miracle. For within a few years of Constantine's death, the church's imperial sponsors were defeated and expelled. The empire was internally divided and faced increasingly formidable enemies from the north. In 410 AD, the unthinkable happened and the city of Rome fell to the Visigoths. The blame for angering the pagan gods was placed on the church. Christianity's failure to protect Rome caused a spiritual crisis amongst the faithful. One man stepped forward to defend the church and to reconcile the eternal glory of heaven with the temporary troubles of life on earth. Saint Augustine of Hippo. One of his great works is City of God, and it follows the sacking of Rome. And he's basically trying to explain why Christianity is not a threat, <laughs> why it hasn't really been detrimental to Rome to take on Christianity. Essentially, he sets up political theology for hundreds of years afterwards in so doing. What Augustine attempts to do is to rethink that whole relationship between imperial power and Christianity in a very specific way. St. Augustine's solution was revolutionary. The city of God is not on earth, nor is it shaken when the cities of this world fall to foreign invaders. To be citizens of that heavenly city, we must place ourselves in the hands of the church and follow the lead of the Pope, the Bishop of Rome, successor to St. Peter. Having enjoyed the protection of Constantine, the church was now strong enough to prosper in Rome long after its protectors had passed into history. In 476 AD, the puppet emperor Romulus Augustulus was deposed. There were to be no more Roman emperors in the West until Charlemagne in the year 800. It was the Christian church that benefited. Into the void left by the collapse of the empire in the West stepped the Pope. By that stage, the line of emperors is really extremely weak, and the popes naturally fill that vacuum. They are substantial figures in their own right as head of the church. The, the large majority of the population in the city uh, are Christians and therefore respect the papacy as a religious leader, and it's obvious that they would uh, also be happy that he takes some kind of political role to, to help them in the face of these barbarian invasions. Is there ever a time when the pope controls an army? Oh yes, the Pope always had a small army, and we, even today we have the Swiss Guards and a small papal army. And there's a long period in the Middle Ages and, and afterwards when you do have these predominantly Christian societies and they at times speak more in terms of um, converting, preaching more with the sword also. By the 7th century, the papacy was the largest landowner on the Italian peninsula and its armies were fully prepared to defend and advance those territories. Again, it was Augustine's formidable intellect that conceived the legal notion of a just war, a concept that resolved the conflict between a church that had armies and the biblical commandment, thou shalt not kill. 
St Augustine said that for a war to be just, it must be officially authorised, have a proper cause and achievable goals, and be proportionate. When I was Defence Secretary, international law constrained what British forces could do in Bosnia. The principles, even today, are recognisably Augustinian. During the Middle Ages, St Thomas Aquinas would amend St Augustine to justify any action fought with good intentions. And as we understand from today's world, the road to total war is paved with good intentions. George Bush remarked that God would be his judge over the war in Iraq, mixing in a way that shocked me. Political action with the role of the divine. I believe that matters of faith and state should not be confused. But if I examine myself, I've also to recognize that being brought up in a society shaped by Christianity, taught its stories and its liturgies, leaves me deeply affected by the church's extraordinary reach and influence. Having built up its institutional power from the time of Constantine onwards, that church is still ruled from Rome today. It's had a profound effect on our civilization. Whether you are a believer or a non-believer, whether you're practicing or whether you're lapsed, your values, your political philosophy, even your vocabulary is immensely affected by the simple fact that you're a citizen of Christendom. Constantine's conversion to Christianity is a critical event in world history. True, before Constantine, Christianity was already growing. But his adoption of the faith brought it in from the cold. He established it on a pedestal from which it has Forever never been toppled and, and set precepts that still shape the faith of billions of worshippers around the world. The conversion of Constantine put Christians into power. And as a result, the church has sometimes been corrupted by money and by secular ambition. And that leads some Christians to believe that Constantine was a bad thing. But if the church had not become established, then probably it would not have converted the hundreds of millions that it did. And since Christians believe that those souls have been granted eternal life, that makes Constantine a very good thing. My view? Well, I'm a lapsed Catholic, and I believe that power is for politicians, not churchmen. So Constantine gets my thumbs down. Next Sunday at 7, theologian Robert Beckford continues Christianity a history by exploring the Dark Ages. Well, next on four, some choices to be made about mum and food in Half-Ton Sun.